sure. Both Petra and Wadi Ram are accessible by public bus from Alcobad Central Bus Terminal. But there's no set schedule and it leaves when the bus is full. So given my co-host Mohammad Zidan is waiting for me, I opt to take the taxi to Wadi Ram. Finally, we arrive at the visitor center, the first stop to buy your ticket. Given the conflict in the neighboring countries, the tourism are struggling everywhere in Jordan. Mohammed wanted to be part of the program to show that Jordan is safe in midst of our surrounding chaos. We tell them that it's like safe. really safe here. It's more relaxed because it's like even the normal problems you forget about when you get here. And of course, less work for me when someone else is doing the talking, at least introduce themselves. Ladies and German, welcome to Wadi Ram. Ahlan wa sahlan in Arabic we say. This is the visitor center and it's the first stop you will stop in Wadi Ram here to get your ticket and to meet your guide at the visitor center here. It's Mohammed Zidan from Wadi Ram. I am Bedouin guide. I know everyone wants to save money, but do not attempt to visit Wadi Ram alone. It's really big, extremely hot during the day, and freezing during the night. You'll be in serious danger if you end up getting lost. The good thing is you can compare and make arrangements with lots of inexpensive local tour operators online. But don't forget to read their reviews, and thanks for supporting the local economy. Before tourism, you know, starts, the, the most of people in the army, so, like, many jobs. Mohammed talked about how tourism created opportunity for the local population, but at the same time it mentioned in recent years how Arab Spring and civil wars in the region devastated this important sector. So this is the Nabatine temple and it's made by the Nabatine people. It's more than 2000 years ago. They like, uh, it's like a temple, so they use it maybe for praying for a lot of stuff. And they used to bring the water by the, from the spring from up and they used to, like easy walk from the village. Some people do it by camel, they come here by camel, take half an hour and then they come back. It's good to see it. You can see some more like cleaning, sometimes you have to do this. You don't come to Wadiram, to the Wadiram village here. Mohammed also talked about how government neglected to improve the lives of people living in Wadi Rum, and most tourists never bother coming here to meet the locals in the village. Not, not in Wadi Rum. So here we are at the Lawrence Spring. You know Lawrence of Arabia, like he was a English guy. He came in the first World War. He made small spring here for the camels because during the war they have lots of camels and lots of horses that they bring to drink water from here. The reason he make it down because the real spring, it's up in the rock, and you see where the thick tree up there by the way. It's very important for the Bedouins here because they, it's the only spring in the ground. So all the camels and the horses they come to drink water from here because it's the only place to get the water. We took a quick break at one of the Bedouin tents. Thank you for being so nice. Yeah, welcome to Jordan, the Wadi Rum. My name is Zida Misk. Doing the, uh, in the shower and after perfume. Very nice smell. Yeah. These Bedouins set up the tent and offer everyone free tea. They make their living by selling traditional perfume, tea, and crafts. But given the state of the Jordanian tourist sector, it's not easy. So, please support them by giving them a tip for their hospitality, or even better, buy something. This area called Kazali Canyon, the, the name of the mountain, Kazali. Inside the canyon, you would see like, you would find like uh, pools, the people before they make it to catch the water. So when they come here and they rest here, they find some water inside. The night before last night it rained a lot and this place always when it rains a lot there is waterfall come through here. This place is it's controlled by the Nabatine. So many caravana pass from here because it's safe area and there is some Nabatine people also they, they like they stay in the area. So they do a lots of drawings. Oh so I think this writing may be more than one thousand years ago. I can read only like Allah 
it's mean the God Muhammad it's talking about Muhammad so it's after the Prophet there's no use to make money if you are I told Muhammad I really miss my favorite winter sport snowboarding well we didn't manage to find any snow but we did found an unusual substitute in form of a sand dune oh. <laughs> Good try! Oh my gosh! Oh! 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 I survived! Yes! Oh, 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 oh! We continue our tour by visiting the Amphitia inscription on a big rock containing some of the best Thematic and Nepotinian inscription drawn by those who passed through Wali Ram on their way from Damascus to Hejaz. Like you see in between his hands, mm -hmm. there is a rope and this used it long time ago, they used it so the camel he don't go far. Because if you bring a new camel, the camel he needs at least, you know, like two months maybe to know his place. So during this time you put rope in his hand and he can walk around, he can't go far but he still can eat and can drink and you don't have to feed him. We took a lunch break to fill up at another Bedouin tent before climbing one of the famous rock bridges. But don't get too comfortable as Mohammed is going to show me his mad driving skills. I just hope his insurance company doesn't see this. Yeah, I don't know my insurance cover it, but oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. We are safe. Wow, I definitely need time to digest my food and wasn't ready for the bridge climb. This is the best excuse I got. So I was dropped out of the Alhama Canyon for some long time and the other to <laughs> empty so the sand in my boots. Walk, it take you half an hour inside the canyon and you will get through to the other side. And in the other side, they will drive around the mountain and they meet you in the other side. You just do the walk and they will meet you there. Okay. It's very nice walk, so yeah. take your time. Okay. Maybe it will take half an hour or if you like, you spend, you know, you take your time. There's lots of things your tour guide won't be telling you. And one of the things is be prepared when you come to, when you come to Wally Rum to do this really frequently oh. <laughs> but my excuse can only last for so long before i'm being forced to prove my manhood yes the bridge climb so this is amofrutha bridge and it's the medium bridge as you see it's the most popular for uh, people to visit because it's easy to climb it to take like Five minutes to climb up, maybe five minutes. I can do it. I can do it. Yes. Oh, I did it. So I'm on top of the pillar and and uh, this is magnificent because it's truly you can see the 360 of the magnificent uh, pillar. And as you can see, you are not going to complain about this view. And and the good thing about this pillar is only take about a few minutes to climb. Oh my god. Alright, and if you're fast enough, whoa, whoa. It only take a minute Holy or two. Smoke. You're running marathons here. Before heading to the camp for the night, we need to grab some chickens. And no, we are not going to KFC. They don't have chicken this big, especially made out of rock. We finally arrived at Mohammed's family run camp. It was actually amazing how fully equipped it is in the middle of the desert. It has really nice clean rooms with power sockets and hot water showers. But my favorite is a beautiful panoramic view of the Wali Rum and the breathtaking sunset from the top of the camp. I'm here in the magnificent Wally Rum here in Jordan in a very special camp. And I'm not gonna tell you why is it special. I'm gonna let one of the owners tell you why this is a very special camp. And from our camp, you can see the sunrise and you can see also the sunset from here. Most Wally Rum tour and accommodation package include transportation to the village, dinner and breakfast. So at night, myself and a couple were treated to a traditional Bedouin barbecue or zard. 
It's a meat and vegetable berry and cooked in a large underground pit. It was followed by some traditional Bedouin entertainment in the form of a tea, dessert, and music near the fireplace. An amazing, intimate, and authentic experience. So, it's around 5 in the morning and I'm waiting for the sun to come up and do an interval capture. Um, that's a, it's really interesting. First time I play around with um, the interval capture on this camera. So I hope I get the same result right now. <laughs> Mohammed cooked us a nice traditional breakfast before I packed up for the bus to Petra. On the way to Wali Ram village, he sent me a traditional farewell song. I must admit, I was a little sad to leave this magnificent place. <laughs> I'm ready. It's rolling. Such a beautiful music. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.